Hey there, folks. Brian King here. Let's just get this straight right out of the gate. Multitasking is a myth. It simply doesn't happen. People who think they are multitasking are misrepresenting their abilities. What they're actually doing is task transitioning. They're focusing on one thing for a little while, and then they focus on something else, and then they come back and focus on a third thing. They are not doing those things simultaneously. Not even jugglers do that. They pay attention to the ball that's going up in the air, and then they catch one, and they pay attention to that ball that's going up in the air. That's how juggling works. It's not paying attention to all those balls at one time, okay? With that in mind, let's talk about how the Asperger's ADHD brain works. We are unitaskers. You know, we are known for hyper-focus, getting so locked into one activity that we basically block out the world around us. We're focusing on one thing, and excluding all others. Our brains are really good at shutting out the world around us in service of focus, okay? And we're unitaskers, meaning one thing. We don't do good with transitions. You know, those who have folks like us in your life know that change can be very difficult for us because we're not built for transitions. We're not built for paying attention to this and paying attention to that and then switching and paying attention to the other thing. We are good at focusing on one thing and sticking with it, okay? And one thing I've been running into a lot with the, the clients I work with that are in high school or college is this flood of last-minute assignments they're being given by their teachers, multiple tests on the same day, a couple of research papers that need to be due, and my clients are crashing and burning because they are built for one thing at a time. They have a very difficult time taking all of the stuff they're being given and breaking it down so that they can deal with it one step at a time. That's typically the executive functions that really throw them, that breaking down organization, prioritization. These are skills that can be built up to a degree. No. Even with all the skills I have, breaking things down and organizing them is incredibly challenging for me. I typically have to bring my wife into it and say, what the heck do I do with all this? How do I prioritize it? How do I know where to begin? And she'll help me break this stuff down. So even at my level of skill, I still struggle with this stuff. And I honestly think I've kind of hit my threshold in terms of what my brain's capable of doing around that specific task. But I self-advocate I'm resourceful in that I have people in my life that I can reach out to to help me do that. So there are a lot of parents and teachers who believe that our students must learn how to do this for themselves. Okay, tell the blind kid he must be allowed to see for himself. Same difference, except you can see blindness, you can't see ADHD or Asperger's because of the way it is it's wired the way it presents, but I'm promising you this. It's neurological, and for some of us, no matter how much therapy or you know, biofeedback or neurofeedback we get, sometimes we hit that threshold and we reach our capacity of what we can do. And it's at that point where we need to get some additional resources, usually some help. And that's not a horrible thing, it's not failure, okay? I've worked with kids that went to college and they spent a lot of time in the tutoring center because they had people that helped them edit their papers because they were horrible at grammar and punctuation, myself included. Because of my dyslexia, grammar I'm getting better at, but punctuation is like an alien language to me. You know, I do my best with it and I use my grammar checker that has its own rules that the grammar cops out there sometimes argue with but I use the tools that are available to improve what my brain already does. I'm not a failure because I use an accommodation. I'm resourceful, okay? So back to the classroom scenario. I know school is set up the way it is for God knows why. I mean, I, I, I really don't understand it. You know, the kids that are in middle school and high school that have these series of classes with teachers that do not talk to each other and don't coordinate their testing schedule so they don't overload their students with all these tests at one time. So where these kids have to do homework and study for tests and read, remember, and regurgitate so that they can pass the test. And the kiddos I work with, their brains are flooded and they freeze because they don't do this multiple tasks at one time thing. 
they need to be able to focus on one thing and one thing only. Now, you might say that's not the real world. You're wrong. Okay, I'm an entrepreneur. I created a job, a career that lets me do that. I schedule my day so that there's one thing to focus on. When that's done, I cross it off and I have another thing to focus on. I've been doing this for 10 years successfully. You have people that go into electronics or IT and they can focus on one line of code at a time. You know, they do this, they find their way to these careers. And just because they can't succeed in a classroom that demands them to stretch their brain in a bunch of different ways it wasn't designed for, doesn't mean they're gonna fail in the real world. It just means that they're gonna struggle at school. School, the place that is almost an island unto itself because it doesn't function in service of the real world. It, it functions in service of a very old paradigm of the industrial age that doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, but enough of that rant. My message to everybody out there is when these kids have a lot of information that they're being given, it's important to sit with them, help them break it down so that they can focus on one task, complete it, then the next task and complete it. When it comes to studying for an entire test, Okay, tests represent chapters in a book, certain subsections of that book. Study one subsection, maybe give yourself a little quiz, then the next subsection. Because when you're dealing with kiddos with ADHD and Asperger's, there tends to be this all or nothing thinking, where they look at the entirety of what they need to know and say, holy crap, this is overwhelming, I can't do this. Well, okay, let's not do all of it, let's do some of it. Then let's do some more then do some more after that. They get overwhelmed because they don't know how to take the all and break it down. So it's either the, all of this is overwhelming, so I'll do nothing, right? All or nothing. All is too much, so I will procrastinate. I will lie about having homework. I'll conveniently forget my book at school because I want to do nothing rather than try and be, right, rather than try and tackle this overwhelming all makes sense so you see the kids that are doing this they're the ones who don't know how to break stuff down they're overwhelmed by the entirety of it so it's important that you sit down with them help them prioritize help them organize develop a system that allows them to tackle it in a less overwhelming way i wish this is something the the teachers had the ability to do but a lot of them are so pressured with more and more stuff from an administration whether it's district-wide or statewide or whatever, that simply do not understand the needs of teachers and students. They're just thinking about test scores and competing with the rest of the world and how the numbers look, and they know jack squat about the experience of the classroom. And I really feel for teachers who could do more and want to do more, but all the parameters prevent them from doing so. So I could go on for about another hour with this, but. I at least wanted to help you wrap your mind around this issue and give you some tools for how to address it more effectively. So thank you very much for tuning in. If you know other people that can benefit from this message, especially educators and parents, please pass it on to them and let them know that I'm here to support them as well. Thank you very much for watching. I honor your time and attention. This has been Brian. We'll talk again soon.